He only wanted was to talk to this girl and it just failed miserably. It was so sad. Hi beautiful people, welcome if it's your first time. My name is Talia Diwoli and today we're talking about Love After Divorce, episode 3. It's season 4 in Korea, but it's season 1 in the United States. Uh, let's just dive into it because as usual there's a lot to unpack. The episodes are over an hour long, so let's just get on into it. The, op the episode opens up with the MCs and they're chatting and um, they ask Jing G1 um, how dating has been like for him because he, I believe, is the one who's been divorced for about 15 years now, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And he says that um, he doesn't really date as much as they think. I guess maybe it's just too awkward or something. So <laughs> they say that Austin should take him out on double dates. And then Austin says Jiwon can take care of himself and they all just laugh about it. Jiwon said that it was very therapeutic for him to watch the show because I guess not only is he seen things that maybe he has had to deal with but maybe also ways to maybe deal with the situation which is something that i really love about the mcs like i said it's like a varied cast of people who have been married before and divorced and remarried people who've been married for years people who are single and people who are divorced it's such a great selection and you get point different points of views from everybody and i think that's fantastic so we move on the second morning at dulcing house and the text comes in that um <clears throat> <clears throat> the singles are have one hour for a date they can either do the one hour with one person or they can split that time between as many people as they want to talk to um tom and harem were doing dishes together and he was very giddy he was like a schoolboy, so excited because i think he really likes her or at least liked her he really likes her, like, off the bat, like, off first impressions. They all rush, not all of them, but a bunch of them rush to get ready and pretty for the dates. They had, de they had uh, specified designated areas for each date or each couple to sit. There was uh, one upstairs on the balcony. There was two sitting areas downstairs, um, <clears throat> outside, um, one in the dining area. I don't remember how many. Uh, how, what is that? It's one, two, three, four. There was one more, but I don't remember where it is. There were five designated areas anyways. Jerome decides to that he would like to sit and wait for somebody to sit with him. So he heads off outside like he was going to sit somewhere. And Heejin, Heejin follows him. We, like, if you remember, Heejin, Jerome was Heejin's first choice. But he forgot her name and then called her by a different name. So she kind of moved off of him. But it seemed like she was actually interested in sitting down with him and getting to know him. He looks outside. She sits down um, right outside on the terrace there. And <laughs> I think she thought that maybe he was going to sit there. But he doubles back, turns around and goes and sits in the dining room in the kitchen area. And I was like, God damn, Jerome, read the signs. But she wasn't who he was waiting for. So obviously he didn't really notice anything. Jimmy and Jisoo head outside together and they sit together. Now, Jimmy and Jisoo, if you remember, went on the grocery team with Jerome and he did. And Jimmy and Jisoo hit it off in the grocery, when they were grocery shopping. They were flirting, they were, you know, helping each other. They were actually really talking. Uh, it seemed like they were vibing. So they sit together and it's like old match made in heaven, right? Jerome sits in the dining area and Benita joins him. At first, I thought that Heejin had come back because she looked like she had come back into the kitchen to come and sit with Jerome, you know? But she just beelines straight for the kitchen, bypasses Jerome, goes into the kitchen to get a drink. That would have been, that would have been dramatic if she had sat down with him. Heejin then goes upstairs and passes the hallway and was waiting on Ricky. Ricky and Tom were getting ready, I believe. So she was waiting in the hallway for Ricky. As soon as he comes out, she tells him uh, there's a sunbed outside and that they should go there together. So they basically go back to um, the original place just outside the, the doors to the terrace outside. Tom didn't even know that the dates had started. He was busy, busy getting his whole stuff sorted, his situation. And I think because he was that uh, clueless about the timing and everything, he missed out on grabbing her rim who was who he wanted. That was who he wanted. Somehow, Dewey and Harim end up together. Oh my God, my hate factors are trying to push in people. It's the Nigerian in me. <laughs> Somehow, Dewey and Harim end up together. 
uh, Tom lost out on getting her in. in fact when he saw her because she was one of the ones that went to get pretty up he was like oh look at you you know he was already on his flirting game and she just beelines and goes upstairs with Dewey because Dewey had already I don't even know if he I, just, I guess it just happened that they ended up together and they went upstairs he was so upset about it and by default it was Tom and Sora that were left and so the dates the first group dates were Dewey and Harim, Tom and Sora, Jimmy and Jisoo, Ricky and Heejin, Jerome and Benita. The MCs um, ask each other if they would have waited or they would have asked people. Yosei Jun said he would ask people out first and just get it over with. Austin said he would fill out the situation. And Lee Hee Young said she would wait, that she would be too embarrassed to ask anybody. So the date starts, Jisoo and Jimmy, um, he said his ideal type is someone who is considerate, someone who listens, and she said that she had fun at the grocery store. Jimmy then brought up the fact that the night before, during the games, when they told her to sit beside someone that she was interested in getting to know, she decided to sit between Ricky and Dewey, and she explained that she just wanted a chance to get to talk to other people. And as soon as she said that, it got it's almost like Jimmy was like, oh, if I'm not your first choice, I can't, I, I, I can't be any of your choices, you know? And he didn't say that, and that's not one the vibe that he gave, but the fact that it got so awkward between them and things just kind of like just fell off the rocks after that, it was really weird, to be honest. They both agreed that communication was like a strong thing for them, and they proceeded not to communicate during their dates and then they spent 20 minutes in, with each other and all of a sudden jimmy asks is there somebody else you want to talk to and i was like god damn these men are just coming in hot and hard like it's just no <laughs> no empathy just like damn so obviously they get up and they go inside now moving on to jerome and benita he talks about um considering not just the physical aspect now but he has to consider everything since he's been married um she says her requirements have changed for what she's looking for in a man they laugh over the fact that she used the word requirements she wants a man who works hard and loves what he does even if he doesn't have a ton of money as long as he has vision she doesn't like people who are picky and Manita asks Jerome if he has a temper and he replies that he did when he was younger the MC's had a field day <laughs> with that response because he said yeah when I was younger I did but now I have I'm, I'm a lot more patient they just I don't know they cracked up they cracked up because I think one of them knows um what's her name one of them knows him I think it was Lee Hee Young. Lee Hee Young knows Jerome from past. Like, they work together and she knows him personally. Moving on to Ricky and Harem. No, Ricky and Heejin. She asked if there was someone he wanted to talk to and he replied, you and two or three other people. She has, she tells him that she has five dogs, five multiples. They're actually really cute. He says he doesn't mind. He loves sports and the gym. He confesses that he misses Missed, misses out on parts of the conversation because his Korean is not that great. And that's what I suspected. He will, he's so much more comfortable speaking in English. And when he said that he misses out on a ton of the conversation because his Korean is not that fluent, I was like, same, Ricky. Same. <laughs> then they move on to Dewey and Harim. Apparently, they had shared a funny moment during the games the night before. And Harim was relieving that moment. She loves the dorky side and humor and um, dorky interaction. So she's a nerd at heart, basically. Yeah, and honestly, I believe it. She laughs at almost everything. Anything can set her off. And I 100% I believe that she is dorky. Dewey made her laugh a lot. She seemed to really be getting into Dewey. And I was surprised, honestly. Harim and Dewey were not a duo that I saw ever in this house. With the way Dewey was so set on Jisoo and... Um, I just didn't think that Dewey was Harim's type, you know, but he seemed to make her laugh and she was all for it. Jimmy and Jisoo have left their, um, lounge area outside by the pool and have made their way into the main entrance and are just awkwardly waiting by the door, not talking, but just waiting for any other person for them to pull and talk to. Benita and Jerome uh, stick to each other. They, they, they decided to just keep talking to each other. Ricky decides to go inside and Heejin was a little disappointed by that. But we all know that Ricky is into Harem and that's who he wants to talk to. Ricky and Jisoo go inside and saw partners with Jimmy and Heejin. So Ricky takes Heejin back outside to talk to her and Jimmy takes Jisoo to talk to her. 
So Ray and Tom, they are talking about different things and then he's teaching her how to meditate. The whole thing was just giving friend vibes. Like I have I'm scared that Sora will not be chosen just because they see her as very capable and that kind of intimidates men. She's definitely intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. Like even if I was in the same house with her, I would be intimidated because this girl, this woman is beautiful. She seems very intelligent, she's very capable, and she also seems to make like she just seems well-rounded so i would be intimidated by that as well and i'm worried that maybe the men pick up on that and nobody wants to couple up with her which is just sad because i think she's i think she's perfect to be honest or at least perfect for somebody imperfectly perfect for somebody you know jimmy and hejin then go over back to the lounge area and um she obviously has five dogs so she says she wants an animal lover he has a dog so that checks out there he wants someone with an amic amicable personality and someone he finds attractive i don't really see a connection between them but it seemed like he really enjoyed the conversation so you never know dewey and harem break over break off and they come downstairs harem said that um, she had fun on the date with Dewey, but Dewey, we all know that Dewey has eyes only for Jesus. So I'm not really sure how that's going to work out with them. Dewey was the one who suggested that they talk to other people and that pissed her. And I think it set her mood off completely. She was not happy about that. They come downstairs and they're looking and trying to find somebody to talk to. The person he wants to talk to is with Ricky outside. So you think that it was a perfect a match made in heaven because Harem's first choice was Ricky and Ricky's first choice was Harem, but I don't know what changed between last night and today. So Dewey asked Harem, is there anybody else you want to talk to? She was just on her phone. You can just tell when girls are pissy and, you know, are sulking a little bit. Because, then he says, because if there's somebody you want to talk to, I can just go up to them and pick the girl so you can talk to the guy. But she didn't really answer. He said, I'm going to go over there and pick Jisoo because I want to talk to Jisoo. And proceeds to do that. Dewey was actually really cool and smooth in this episode. Forget the dorkiness. He's actually, he actually has game. So good for you, Dewey. Uh, he goes off, talks to Ricky and says, oh, can I talk to, can I take Jisoo up for a chat? Uh, Ricky, so Ricky ends up with Harim, which you think is perfect, and then Dewey ends up with Jisoo, who he wanted. Ricky definitely perked up as soon as he was uh, coupled up with uh, Harim for the rest of his hour. So now we go to the Ricky and Harim date. He says he wanted to talk to her, but then replies that he wasn't, but she then replies that he wasn't proactive. Um, it was just awkward, <laughs> honestly. It was very awkward after that, almost like he didn't know what to, I think he was very nervous and didn't know how to handle the situation. She was already pissed off that Dewey broke off their date and was longing to go back to Dewey apparently. So her mind was not even on this date. So she just up and says, um, I'm going to leave. It was a little rude. I'm not going to lie. For poor, poor, poor Ricky. I was like, ah, oh, Ricky, all he wanted was to talk to this girl and it just failed miserably it was so sad and she goes upstairs and goes back to dewey honestly just goes up there and says do you mind if we switch again i want to talk to dewey dewey wasn't very impressed by that but it was what it was i think they had like two more minutes by the time they settled down but no 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 when they then decided to separate they came back in the hallway and she put her hands through dewey's which was the first sign of physical contact we had seen on this show Honestly, like nobody else had willingly grabbed another person. So that was big moves for Harem. Like she is fully on board with Dewey. She likes Dewey. Uh, Ricky then goes off and asks Jerome if he can talk to Benita. A time was kind of up. So Ricky and Benita's date, she wanted, she said she wanted to talk to him and that uh, he was her first, first choice. The date seemed to go well. And by the end of it, it seemed like she was swaying towards Ricky be just because he had proactively come to interrupt the date with Jerome and say, I want to talk to you. So before Harim even linked hands with Dewey, Dewey didn't even clue in that Harim was interested in him. In his mind, he was just like, why are, you, why are you ruining my date with the girl that I want, you know? Until she linked hands with him, he, it didn't clue in for him that she was interested. I thought that that was cute. So um, the date, the hour is up, the dates end, the individual dates end. They all return to their rooms. Benita, Sora, and Harim are chatting. And Benita tells the girls that she finds Ricky uh, more interesting right now than Jerome. Harim then voices that she needs 
needs to apologize to Ricky uh, because of how she reacted during the date. And she said that her personality matches more with Dewey. Tom, Dewey, and Ricky are chatting, and Ricky is now into Benita. Jimmy and Jerome, uh, they're talking because they're roommates. Jimmy's interest seems to have shifted to another person. I'm guessing that his interests have now shifted from Jisoo to Heejin. And then they announce that it's time for a group date. So they all go out together as a group to have, I guess, group interaction and a date. The group date is Bachata. Which is a style of dancing. <laughs> if you if you didn't know by the shimmy. <laughs> I'm tired, people. I don't know what I'm doing anyways. Uh, so there's a board with names on there. And they are to pick their partners for the day. Tom makes the first move and picks her, uh, and chooses Harem. I guess Tom was, was burned by not coming out first uh, early in the morning. And missing out on his chat with Harem. So he picked her first. Ricky next. And picks Benita. Yeah, Ricky picks Benita, Jimmy picks Heejin, Dewey picks Jisoo, and Jerome defaults to Sora. So the bachata instructors come in, it's a sensual dance, so they're going to have to interact with their partners and they have to learn the dance. Uh, first, they have to look into each other's eyes for five seconds. Sora made zero to no eye contact until the last end with Jerome. Ricky and Benita seemed comfortable. They, they were staring into each other's eyes. eyes. Who does H factors keep coming, people? They are staring into each other's eyes happily. Jimmy kept looking away. He was so shy. Couldn't really look into Heejin's eyes. Tom was so happy. He was staring straight into Harem's eyes. And Dewey and Jisoo were giggling. Then they learned the routine. Jerome was really... Jerome is an outgoing guy. He is very social, very sociable. And he did everything to make that interaction or the dance routine with Sora as comfortable as comfortable as he possibly could for Sora. So big ups to Jerome for that. I was very impressed with the way he handled himself. Tom left Harem and was practicing with the others. <laughs> Jimmy and Heejin were very cute with the way that they kept slight glancing at each other and like jimmy is cute with the way he reacts i'm not gonna lie dewey was all in for jisoo then each couple had to dance individually like together um and present to the group so first it was jimmy and heejin tom and harem uh she was not interested honestly harem had eyes only for dewey throughout this entire bachata jerem and sora she all of a sudden um, by the end of this was like very I don't I wouldn't say she was interested I think she said that her impression of him changed because I think the first day he was she was not interested in him at all but she said her impressions of him changed and that she saw him in a different light now meanwhile he thinks that she didn't like him at all because she couldn't look him in the eyes which was just a massive massive case of miscommunication on both ends you know then Benita and Ricky, and that was, it was not, it was not a comfortable dance for them. And then Dewey and Jisoo, and they won, they won t-shirts. Dewey is, uh, he said he took sports, dance sports, I think is what he said. So he was analyzing the moves from the very beginning. I, it worked for him, to be honest. After the dates, the MC deliberate, and they're worried about the miscommunication between Jerome and Sora. And honestly, I would be too, because it was like opposite ends of the spectrum there. Uh, they think that Jisoo and Dewey might be a couple. And I don't know that Jisoo is into Dewey, if I'm being honest. I don't think she is. Harem, um, they say that Harem will interrupt Dewey and Jisoo every chance she gets. And I 100% think that that's what's going to happen. Back at the house, Tom and Ricky go for a swim while the ladies have a slumber party. Uh, Benita says she took the lead with Ricky doing but the bachata dance. And that she's very accommodating, but would sometimes like to follow somebody else's lead. So it's going back to the same problems that uh, Ricky's ex had with him, where she wanted him to be more assertive. But he's not that guy, you know? So you, if you want Ricky, you take Ricky the way he is. He's not that person, you know? So now um, Benita is back on Jerome's wagon and would rather pursue things with Jerome. Heejin said that she thought that Jimmy was cute and while Heejin was talking, Harren brought up Dewey and brought it back to Dewey and all she could say was Dewey, 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 Dewey. The girls even made fun of her that she couldn't wait to talk about Dewey. Uh, they get a text that it's time for jobs to be revealed and Sora was the only one who got her job revealed 
uh, during this episode. I don't know why they would just only reveal one. But she uh, is a tick. She works at TikTok. She's a project strategy and go to market um, manager right now. She's worked. She says she's always worked in between the intersections of entertainment and tech. So she's worked at all the major entertainment companies, Netflix, uh, Facebook, um, all the major tech companies. Um, She's worked with all the platforms, actually. I think she said Facebook, Instagram, Netflix. Like, she named a bunch of them. And she seems to be one of the high top people right now. I don't know. She said second to somebody really high, though. But she seems to be at a very high position within TikTok and is doing really well for herself. So, again, I get it. She's a very capable woman. So, I'm not surprised that she has such a high-paying job with such a high company uh jerome was next and i think he works for a fortune 500 company but we don't get that revealed until next until sunday so i'm actually excited to, to hear what they all do and yeah honestly i can't rave enough about this series loving it i'm very like um interested in seeing how this whole jisoo dewey harem triangle is going to play out i think this that's going to get really complicated i don't know that jisoo is into dewey so but I don't know that Dewey is into Harem, you know. Tom was very much into um, Harem, but that whole bachata thing kind of put them off each other. She was never into him. She only has eyes for Dewey, but I put him off her afterwards. So now I think Tom is going to be looking for a new person in the house. Jimmy seems to be liking Heejin, so maybe that is a couple. Benita and Jerome. Jerome really, I think Jerome likes Benita, so I think that might be a couple. But I don't know exactly what Benita is looking for because she seems very specific. And I don't know that her A type personality will go with Jerome's casual personality. I know they say opposites attract, but sometimes it's the things that, um, the qualities that you like about your partner in the beginning and the things that irritate you in the future. So I just don't know. It's a question mark between Jerome and Benita for me. So that leaves Sarah, Tom, uh, Ricky, and Jisoo. I'm not really sure what's going on within that situation. I think that Ricky and Sora might make a good pair. Because I don't think Sora is looking for uh, anybody to take the lead in her life. I think she's just looking for companionship and a partner. And I feel like Ricky will fit that bill perfectly. I don't know what it is about them. But again, it's the same concept of uh, opposites attracting again. So I don't know. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see people. It's 14 episodes. We're only on episode 3. So there's still more to go. It's getting interesting. I'm pretty sure it's going to get heated sooner or later. People are going to start pissing on their territories, both men and women. I don't know why I use that phrase, but it's the best way for me to describe these love angles and triangles, people. So I'm excited. I'm engaged. I'm here for it. And I hope you guys are enjoying this content weekly. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post more, you can expect them weekly. So I will see you in the next one. Bye.